Something that time has already told us is whether they are putties, Kelzaks, Vivix, Exborgs, etc. Every rose has its thorns. Just like every something is something. Hello Ranger friends and Happy New Year! Welcome to another Power Rangers off-season video. First and foremost, I am so sorry that this video is so late. I've had family in town this week celebrating the holidays and things were a little complicated as far as recording. The off-season has gotten off to a really bad start in terms of scheduling with videos on Monday, Monday, and now Wednesday. And I apologize for that. I'm going to work even harder to provide you guys with consistent videos on a regular schedule because you deserve it. That being said, I hope you guys had a safe and fun celebration for your new year, but for me, it's time to get back to business. Actually, it's kind of fitting that this video falls on New Year's week because the idea of new beginnings is a very big part of this discussion. Power Rangers is entering the last year of its current deal with Nickelodeon. The previous two-year renewal took place in October of 2013, so it's a little curious why the next renewal is taking so long. That got me thinking about what the future might hold for the show that we all love. TV is a different animal these days. One of the strongest TV networks right now not only isn't even a network, it's not even a TV station. That, of course, being streaming service Netflix. Could Power Rangers find a home there? What other channels might be a good home for the show? And why does all of this even matter? Let's talk about that in this week's video, shall we? Power Rangers in the Age of Netflix. It is said that those who fail to understand history are doomed to repeat it. So let's take a quick look at the history of Power Rangers on TV. The show was first produced in 1993 by Saban Entertainment and aired on Fox Kids, Fox's Saturday morning TV block. As we all know, the show exploded in popularity, eventually airing as often as five days a week on Fox's after school block. The show would continue to air on Fox stations until 2003 during Power Rangers Wild Force. At that point, Disney, wanting to purchase the Fox Family Channel, agreed to take on Power Rangers as part of the deal. The show continued to air on Fox Kids until the halfway point of the season when Fox shut that block down and the show moved to ABC Kids. Disney also aired interesting rerun blocks of the show on their other channels, such as Power Rangers Generations, which was directly responsible for yours truly regaining interest in the franchise again. However, it was always clear that Power Rangers was a property Disney didn't exactly like or know what to do with, bristling at the expense of producing the show and wondering how to balance its kids' audience with the violence on the show. This came to a head airing-wise during Power Rangers RPM. RPM was perhaps the worst aired season of the show, a shame that's just magnified by the sheer quality of the program. The show was removed entirely from cable, only airing on ABC Kids. It did not have a consistent time slot, sometimes airing as early as 6 a.m. And also, it was always the sacrificial lamb for local networks' educational and informational requirements, meaning that on random weeks, with no notice at all, the show just wouldn't air at all. With the sterling logic of network executives, Disney, which to be fair was planning to end the show anyway, used the lower ratings as further justification of ending new production. In 2010, Disney remastered 32 episodes of Mighty Morphin, airing them on ABC Kids. The funniest thing about this cheap trick is that I remember that they had commercials that stupidly tried to tie this re-airing into the show's overall story, saying that Rita Repulsa had gone back in time and the Rangers had to beat her again. Um, what? But hey, that being said, stupid as it was, I do have to thank this re-airing and the subsequent toy line for finally getting my hands on a Dino Megazord. It's unclear if Disney would have pushed forward with more reversion seasons. I mean, heck, their original plan for the show was just to air reruns. It was only the idea of moving production to New Zealand that convinced them to make new seasons. It's unclear because the original creator and now savior of the show returned. 
Haim Saban had formed a new production company, Saban Brands, and seeing the sad state that his original creation was in, he struck a deal with Disney to get back not just the right to produce new Power Rangers, but the creative rights to everything Power Rangers, including the seasons produced by Disney. However, the show was now once again owned by a production company, so they needed to strike a deal to find a TV home. That did not take long as they made a deal with Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon has been airing new episodes of the show for five years now, going into its sixth with Dino Supercharge, as well as certain marathons of reruns mainly airing on Nicktoons. It was a two-year deal originally, 2011 and 2012, that has been renewed twice since then, currently set to expire after Dino Supercharge finishes airing in 2016. So, with the current deal entering its lame duck year, the choices are pretty clear for Power Rangers. It can stay with Nickelodeon, or go somewhere else. So, let's start with taking a look at the pros and cons of staying. The pros are pretty clear. Power Rangers has definitely seen a resurgence on Nickelodeon, the number one network for boys' TV. Ratings are up since the end of the Disney era, and at least Nick does advertise the show, and does seem glad to have it as part of their lineup. Heck, someone on the internet spotted a Dino Charge ad in Times Square on New Year's Eve! However, anyone who's been watching Power Rangers for the past few seasons, or any show on Nick really, knows the main con to staying. Nick insists that any show that airs on its channels only have around 20 episodes per season stretched out over an entire calendar year. This results in long hiatus stretches without any new episodes. In Power Rangers' run on Nickelodeon, this break has been as long as six straight months without a new episode. The ratings always take a while to recover after the hiatus, and the producers are still struggling with how to fit such a small episode requirement into the format of a show that had previously been at least 32 episodes. They've tried two approaches thus far. With Samurai, they just made a 40 episode season and stretched it out over two years. Admittedly, this did give the show a bit more epic of a feel. It had been longer than seasons had been in the recent past. However, parts of it feel really empty and it just took a really long time to get from start to finish. Next for Megaforce, they just bashed two seasons together, adapting Gosager into Megaforce and Gokaiger into Super Megaforce. The failures of those shows, which were recently and excellently laid out by Linkara in his latest History of Power Rangers, were primarily due to laziness on the part of the production staff. However, cramming not just one, but two seasons into 20 episodes each and creating one coherent story wouldn't be easy no matter what. So if it is decided that there are greener digital pastures out there, where could Power Rangers go? Well, one option is kind of obvious because I put it in the title. Netflix is really growing as a TV competitor, both in producing shows and airing original content. And they likely wouldn't impose an episode limit on the show, as they already air all of the seasons of the show, including all 60 episodes of Mighty Morphin Season 1. It would be really interesting to go from one extreme, 20 episodes, one per week with long stretches of no episodes, to the other, Netflix does not post episodes on a week-by-week -week schedule. Instead, they post all the episodes of a season at once, allowing viewers to decide how they want to watch the show. I find myself wondering how I'd review the show if it moved to Netflix. One video a week? In chunks? Four or five episodes at a time? In the end, that's a bridge I'm going to burn if and when I come to it, but it is interesting to think about. The main con to Power Rangers moving to Netflix is that it would put the show behind a paywall. Now, admittedly, being on Nick on cable is already something of a paywall, but Nick already has itself on basically all basic cable lineups. However, depending on how adopted Netflix is, a move to Netflix might mean that some kids suddenly lose access to the show, and that would be unfortunate. So, what are some other options for Power Rangers? Well, when you think of Netflix, you also think of Hulu, their primary competitor. Hulu is also moving into the area of some original produced and first run programming. Hulu doesn't currently host any Power Rangers content, but their search engine does include some clips that link back to Nickelodeon's website. Hulu is just not as popular or ubiquitous as Netflix. That is just a given. 
However, having the first run of Power Rangers could be something of a boost for them. Also, since Hulu has free and paid tiers, the show wouldn't be behind a paywall. It could air for free, maybe on something of a delayed schedule for the free tier. Also, Amazon Prime is moving into that same area, and having the first run of Power Rangers could really legitimatize them as a content provider, not just a content streamer. The options for Power Rangers on traditional TV are sorely few. Obviously, Disney wouldn't have the show back, and I don't think Saban would even ask, to be honest. And the Saturday morning TV block is kind of a thing of the past now. One network that could have been a great home for Power Rangers was a channel called The Hub, owned by Discovery, that aired family and kids programming made primarily by Hasbro. However, recently Discovery took a greater stake over Hasbro, renaming the channel Discovery Family, and they seem to be slanting it more towards educational non-fiction programming. The main other idea people would have for a TV home for Power Rangers would be Cartoon Network. I mean, heck, Cartoon Network airs Power Rangers in Mexico, and in the Philippines, Cartoon Network airs English dubs of Kamen Rider series. However, the main problem with that lies with the first name of the channel. Cartoon. Now, it has aired live-action programming in the past, but it's never done terribly well. I mean, heck, the best option for Power Rangers on Cartoon Network might be not doing the main series, but doing a comedic parody Power Rangers by adapting Hikonin Sentai Akiba Ranger, Toei Sentai Parody. So, I mean, why does all this even matter anyway? I mean, the show's going to be on TV or not, right? Well, there's two major reasons that I can think of. The first is just the overall history of the show. Dino Supercharge is the 22nd season, not counting that reversion nonsense, of Power Rangers, meaning we're just a few years away from the show's 25th anniversary. Now, I realize that the show has not done a great job of handling its anniversaries lately, but it's still a milestone that we all can and should hope the show reaches. The other is that we have the 2017 film coming, and when it does, the show should see a huge resurgence of interest. People will be reminded of Power Rangers, and that's a great chance to let them know that it still exists, it still airs. The movie and the show should complement each other in some way, play into each other. Okay, so maybe not directly story-wise, as I think that would be really tricky to pull off. But a trailer for the show should air before the movie, and commercials for the movie should air during the show. Heck, you could even have segments where you show trailers and special clips, interviews with the cast. What I'm saying is that I think the new movie is going to spark a huge set of new interest in the show, and that it needs a good home to channel that interest. So the final point on the little web diagram that I made for this video is when will we know? But to be honest, I don't have an answer to that question. I thought we would already know by October or November. I'm not sure what, who is waiting for, actually. The ratings for the show are right about where they've been. Buzz with the older fans is high over the quality of Dino Charge's writing. I mean, does Nick think they're not getting enough return for their investment? Do, is Saban Brand finally fed up with the long hiatuses and the episode limits? Another factor in this is this season's early start. Dino Supercharged is going to be the first Saban brand season to begin airing in January. Now, admittedly, it's the second to last day of January, but everybody was expecting it the next week in February. As silly as it might sound, it really has some people wondering, is one of these two sides rushing the show out the door, getting to the next opportunity? I really hate to leave this video on a, we'll see, but that's all I have for you. Heck, if Saban Brand strikes a deal to move the show somewhere else, Nick might actually insist on that being kept quiet until Supercharge finishes airing, so attention's not taken away from it. Time will tell, my friends. Something that time has already told us is whether they be putties, battlings, Kelzaks, or Vivix, every evil force needs a good group of foot soldiers to help the monsters get things under control. And every season, we look forward to seeing what the latest batch of grunts is going to look like. Hey, we can't rely on the Sentai versions. Sometimes they don't use those. In the comments below, leave me your votes for your favorite Power Rangers, grunts, foot soldiers, cannon fodder, etc. And let me just say this clearly, since I'm not sure that it's gotten through or it's gotten a little fuzzy. 
If you want me to shout out something, if you win the channel shout out, let me know. If you want me to shout out your channel, let me know. If you want me to shout out someone else's channel, let me know. If you want me to shout out a website, a podcast, anything else, let me know. If you don't tell me something to shout out and you win the channel shout out, I will check to see if your channel is active and if you win, I'll shout out that. But if it's not, then just like last week, I'll just pick something that I want to talk about. And hey, if you guys don't really care about all of that, that's fine. I'm just letting you know. All right, everybody, that's going to wrap up this week's Power Rangers off-season video. Once again, I'm really sorry that it's late. I'm going to work really hard on getting things back on schedule. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Leave those votes below for your favorite Power Rangers grunts. And until next time, may the power protect you. It's said that those who don't understand... Blah. I don't understand that. It's said that those who fail to understand history are doomed to repeat it. So let's take a quick look at the... Pa blah, 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 blah. It's said that those who don't... Crap. Don't crap? Ooh, that would be like constipation. Constipation. The show aired on Fox... Blah, 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 blah. It's unclear if Disney would have pushed forward with the ratings always take a while to recover after the hiatus, and the producers are still struggling with how to work. Netflix would likely impose no episode limit on the show, seeing as they already stream every season of the show already, including all. Damn it! I keep stuck. Stuck in piece of burping in the Dookie Diamond Shine. So, if it is decided, <laughs> damn it. Well, when you think of Netflix, you think of Hulu. Uh, uh, Hulu is also moving into some originally produced and first run programming. They sure are owned by Discovery and primarily programmed by Lululululul. The other main idea people would think of for a TV home for Power Rangers would be Cartoon Network. I mean, heck. Why not, right? <laughs> the other is that we have the 2017 movie coming soon, and yeah. The other is that we have the 2017 movie coming, and when it does, there should be a surge of reinterest, and that's the damn it. I really hate to leave this video on a we'll see, but that's all I can really tell you. Heck, if. if <laughs>